Our scripture reading this morning, oh good, it's common English. I um, enjoy reading from the Bible, so it might not be at the same slide time that I am reading. But we are reading 1 John 4, 7 to 21. It's titled, Love and God. Dear friends, let's love each other because love is from God. And everyone who is born from God and knows God, the person who doesn't love doesn't know God because God is love. This is how the love of God is revealed to us. God has sent his only son into the world so that we can live through him. This is love. It is not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as the sacrifice that deals with our sins. Dear friends, if God loved us this way, we also ought to love each other. No one has ever seen God. If we love each other, God remains in us and his love is made perfect in us. This is how we know we remain in him and he remains in us because he has given us a measure of his spirit. We have seen and testified that the father has sent the son to be the savior of the world. If any of us confess that Jesus is God, God's son, God remains in us and we remain in God. We have known and we have believed and the love that God has for us. God is love and those who remain in love remain in God and God remains in them. This is how love has been perfected in us so that we can have confidence on the judgment day because we are exactly the same as God is in this world. There is no fear in love but perfect love drives out fear because fear expects punishment. The person who is afraid has not been perfect in love. We love because God first loved us. If anyone says, I love God and hates a brother or a sister, he is a liar. Because the person who doesn't love a brother or a sister who can be seen can't love God who can't be seen. This commandment we have from him, those who claim to love God ought to love their brothers and sisters also. Thank, this is the word, the spirit of God, stir up your people here. Now when Alexis sent out a Morning, we need help. I said, sure. And then when she told me what the scripture was, it was like, you bet. This is one of my favorite books of the Bible, 1 John, because we talk so much about love. Let us pray. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Come as fire and burn, come as wind and cleanse. Come as light and reveal. Convict, convert, and consecrate us till we are wholly thine, serving thee with joy and gladness all the days of our lives. Amen. You know, through the years, we've all read many books. But one of my favorite authors, Dr. Seuss, whom I quote often, says, don't cry because it's over. Smile because it happened. And isn't that what life is? Isn't that what everything we do is? You know, it's my last day of school. I'm crying, you know, but it was a joy. Smile for the memories. We go to a funeral. There are tears there. But we have to not cry. I mean, it's okay to cry, but we have to remember the memories and smile because that life happened. Do you remember the book 
Horton Hears a Who. The opening lines are on the 15th of May in the jungle of Newell, in the heat of the day, in the cool of the pool. He was splashing and enjoying the jungle's great joys when Horton the elephant heard a small noise. I'm sure many of you remember reading that or hearing it as a child or maybe reading it to a ch your children or grandchildren. It's a great story. It's about an elephant named Horton. And one day he discovers and he hears this small community of creatures who live in Whoville on a speck of dust. A speck of dust. And they're called Who's. Horton is convinced of their um, existence when he hears them. It tells that he promises and vows to help them, to care and protect them, these little creatures called Who's. And Horton does protect them. One of the driving motivations, one of the driving truths that pushes Horton to believe a person's a person, no matter how small. You know, I believe that that goes along with our scripture today. First John says, love one another, no matter how small. You know, those words were repeated three times in today's scripture. It says, love one another because love is from God. We also ought to love one another. And if we love one another, God abides in us and his love is perfected in us. You know, this is something that we might have an affiliation with God is equal to the same as love. As we know, throughout life, we meet many different people, different people from different backgrounds. And the Methodist Church right now, Broadway, is saying we embrace all. It doesn't matter. You know, I used to teach a class on relationships, and I would always say to the kids, we believe our life is a little glass house, and we believe everybody else lives in the same glass house. That's not true. All of our houses are different. All of our family makeups are different. But does that mean that we love someone less? It's easy to think that if someone is not like me, then they're different. But I recall the song that we sang as children. Jesus loves the little children of the world. Red and yellow, black and white, they were precious in his sight. Jesus loves the little children of the world. world. Or in Jesus' words from Matthew 22, 39, it says, love your neighbor as yourself. Getting back to Horton, you know, his mission was to protect that speck. He was ridiculed, he was harassed by other animals in the jungle. Those that couldn't see the who's or hear them he was criticized by the sour kangaroo and her young kangaroo in her pouch. Then he was harassed by the monkeys and they snatched the clover where the Who's lived. After a very, very long search, Horton finally finds that clover and that speck on it. And after many unfortunate events, Little Jojo of Whoville lets out a loud whoop. And finally, the kangaroos and the monkeys can hear the who's. 
Now they're convinced that the Who's exist. And the other jungle animals vow to help Horton protect them. You know, does that sound like life? There are marginal people. And who did Jesus love? Those marginal people. He served them. He healed them. He ate with them. Sometimes we can feel like the who's. We're on the other side. No one will listen to us. Everything around us in the world is having an effect on us. I won't lie, there are going to be kangaroos and monkeys and vultures in this world. But we do have someone that will advocate for us, that will watch out for us. And because we have faith, we don't need to hear the who's. We don't need to see God. We know God is walking with us. In verses 9b to 10 today, it said, God has sent his only son into the world so that we can live through him. This is love. It's not that we love God, but that he loved us. And he sent his son as a sacrifice to deal with our sins. You know, the love talked about in 1 John is what is called agape love. I don't know if any of you have ever heard of agape love. When our kids were small, we had a record, and it, the first song on the was, I remember, Welcome to Agape Land. And you know, what is agape? Agape is Christian love. It's a church family there for you. That's love. First John speaks of three types of love. God's love, our love for God, and our love for one another. That's what love has to do with it. We love one another. Verse 8 says, anyone who does not love does not know God, because God is love. You know, when you're first working with somebody, um, teaching them about the Bible, confirmation class many times, you talk about John and they think there's only one John in the Bible, the Gospel of John. The Gospel, John, is attributed to writing the first, second, and third letters of John. And John, if you recall, was the son of Zebedee. And he was a strong disciple of Jesus Christ. John had written to some Christians who aren't terribly sure about God's love in these letters. They questioned, does God really love us? And that is what John's response is to them in our today's scripture about what love is. He tells us where we can find God's love in action. In the New Interpreter Study Bible, there's a special note about verses 4, 7 to 12. And it, today it affirms without qualification the very nature of God is disclosed in love. Love for God and for fellow human beings. In the gospel reading today that I did not read that is from Big John, John 15, 1 through 8, he uses the analogy of the true vine. And we remember this story. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me, and I in you, then you will produce much fruit. If we remain in love with him, because he's going to be in love with us, we're going to produce love. 
With me, you can't, without me, you can't do anything, he says. This is his promise to us. So if we go back to Horton, here's a who. One of the most moving parts of the story is at the end. It's when the who's are in danger by the animals that are trying to make noise and they scream over and over again, we are here, we are here, we are here. Does God do that for us? I'm here. I'm here. I love that old picture of Jesus standing at the door and there's no handle for God, for Jesus to open the door. We have to open that door and let him in. How often do we not listen as God speaks to us? A, a favorite verse, and um, many people in missions thrive on this verse, Matthew 25. I was hungry and you gave me food to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me a drink. I was a stranger and you welcomed me. I was naked and you gave me clothes to wear. I was sick and you took care of me. I was in prison and you visited me. Those are all signs of love. The scripture says the righteous questioned when they did this and the king replied to them, I assure you that when you have done it for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you have done it for me. When I love the marginal, I have done it in God's name. I often talk, especially on my um, daily devotions, that God gives us the light. And one of our missions is to shine that light of Jesus and love to everyone we meet. John wants us to know that we are loved. And he wants us to live as people who are loved. Unfortunately, today there are, are many people that do not believe they are loved. God's love is so deep, so wide, so amazing, how tragic it is for those people to miss God's love. I believe that we all need to be a little bit more like Horton and to listen to the cries of others. Not just think about ourselves. It's easy to get caught up in our own life. Years ago when I was teaching, I had a poster in my classroom and it said, it was a young child and it said, I am somebody because God doesn't make junk. I don't know if I could have that poster up today. Probably not. But God doesn't make junk. Every human being needs to be loved. The marginal. In today's world, it's important for us to take care of each other, support each other, love each other, invite each other, because a person's a person, no matter how small. God is love. And you all share that love and can pass it on. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Amen.